Hey, Sandra here from Create in Spain. I'm going to do a little bit of information on Scal4, Shortcuts A Lot 4. Um, discovered a few bits and pieces and there are some updated versions. The latest updated version as of today, which is Friday the 9th of January 2015, is version 4.08. I believe. I think it's 0, 0, 08 or it's 0, 08, whichever. Um, but the one with the number 8 on it is the last one. And the company has updated a few bits and pieces, got rid of a few bugs and generally improved matters. So that's not quite the subject of my uh, film this morning. The reason I wanted to do a little film on Scal this morning is because I discovered some little bits in the preferences which were causing me problems and it's probably going to cause you problems if you don't take notice of them. So if I click on here and I go to shortcuts a lot and go to preferences and the thing comes up. Now the first one, saving DPI, uh, the most popular way of saving the DPI is at 90. Um, a lot of other programs including Inkscape use 90 so it saves you a few sizing issues. Then we have remember last mat size. Now that's fairly straightforward and for the most part you probably won't want to change that a great deal. Auto zoom the mat to fit the window, yeah that's fine. Keep mat visible while cutting, yeah that's fine. Warn me about too many fonts installed, yeah that's okay. The ones that are concerning are the edit ones. And there are two on here which are of concern. Constraining angles, nudging arrow key increment. Arrow key increments can be, sometimes it's useful to alter this. The rest generally wouldn't bother. The one that was causing me problems is this one because it was checked, keep objects on the map when dragging. And I didn't realise that was in preferences, I don't know whether I missed it or whether it's a new one, but I didn't realise that it was causing me the problems that I was getting and basically I would be drawing something on the map, I'd want to move it away and it would kind of like bounce back and I was thinking why on earth can I not move this and yet if I selected an object and then nudged it with the keys it was fine, it would do it, but it's when dragging. So that was what was giving me the problem, aha, problem solved, yay. Um, the other one which was going to be a problem but wasn't immediately obvious was automatically simplify shapes and that was checked. Now I hadn't altered any of the preferences so I presume they were just checked as, as normal, as a default. And I hadn't taken any notice of this, automatically simplify shapes. I thought, oh yeah, if you're doing a trace you might want it simplified. Not a problem, I thought. Uh, but I hadn't really given it any great deal of thought. And the problem was quite simple. If I were to draw a freehand shape, so, like so, and to try and edit it, with the simplification on, some of the angles of the shape would be distorted. And the only reason I noticed this, I was cutting out um, pieces for a, a slot form pirate ship. And there were some very small pieces in there, but I wanted to extend the slot. So I made some rectangles and I put them where I thought they should be. And then I did, uh, was it back minus front? And that produced the result I wanted. Except for the fact the angles on my slots were kind of warped and I couldn't understand why and that's obviously why it was because it does, it's bound, if you're simplifying, if you're taking nodes out it's bound to simplify the shape, it's bound to distort it to a certain extent. Probably not a problem for most things you do but if you're finding that your shapes are slightly off what you're expecting check that box, it probably could be that. Alright, now I'm going to get rid of this and I'm just going to draw some random rectangles and I'm going to show you this little button here now this is your normal selection tool and you can drag over or whatever and 
whoops, rotated that by mistake, you can drag over and select things as you know. This one here that looks a bit like a halo with a couple of arrows on it. I wasn't quite sure how this worked until I experimented. What happens is you use it, whoops, helps if I select the right thing, doesn't it? You use it and you draw a line around your object. And then you end up with a selection box around it and you can then move it to your heart's content. What puzzled me in the first place, and probably because I wasn't paying close enough attention to the screen to notice the uh, bounding box, was that I was drawing this line, and then as soon as you release the mouse, it would disappear. You think, oh, what, 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 what's happened to it? <laughs> and it just changes to whatever um, shape it is that you've selected. But it's really handy if you've got small things in the middle of other things and they're difficult to select with the other tool. That's a really handy one to be able to use. Um, next thing I wanted to show you is the type tool. And if I type normally, just random letters. All oh, right, fair enough. Uh, choose a slightly different font. Come on. Whoops. You click on this too fast and it disappears. Oh, and I've got my whirly gig back. Hang on. Wait for my whirly gig to go away. Right. Ah! This is really, really fast. It disappears. Okay. Uh, say webdings or whatever. And just click anywhere and do my typing. Now, that's not very clever because I haven't got anything in those boxes. But sometimes you're wondering what letter does what if you're using anything other than pure letters, if you're using image fonts. And look in your library and you see you get shapes, projects, and in the middle is fonts. And if you have fonts selected, you can then see all the various things that you will get in that particular bunch of fonts. So that's a handy one. Don't forget that it's there. It can save you hours of messing around trying to find the right shape that you were looking for and you think that it was in a certain font and then you find it was in a completely different one after about three hours looking for it. Okay, that's it for me for the time being. I'm hoping that the updates might have stopped the software from crashing my computer. I haven't had a chance to test that out yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.